Hey, 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 and welcome back to the channel. Guys, I stumbled on some really important information today that I wanted to post in a video, which relates directly to SMC3 and the IBT2 motor controllers, and ultimately your 12 volt DC motors. So what I found out today quite by accident, and what led me to do some research was this track here and this car here in a Seto Corsa. So today I decided to give the... Um, now, guys, forgive me for my pronunciation here. It's probably completely wrong. I think this uh, is uh, Oyster Reich Ring. Now, this is a 1979 version, I think, pretty much of the Red Bull Ring. And I decided to give this track a crack with the Lotus 49. And what happened was I was only five laps in to this race when my motor one shut down. It failed. My rig dropped severely to the left. I basically had to stop the game and I thought, wow, what's going on here now? It is quite a violent track and particularly with this car, as I've mentioned in the past, it really does put a lot of stress on the rig, but, but it was five laps and the motor was really, really hot. Motor one was hot and motor two was warmer than it's ever been. So I decided, look, I'm going to open my electronics box. I opened my box. I touched my IBT2s and they were really hot to the touch, the hottest they've ever been. I was like, oh, this is rubbish. You know, what's going on here? I need to get some better rated motor controllers. So in I marched to my internet computer, got online, and in my search for higher ampage motor controllers, I stumbled across some information about the IBT2s that is really important and that I did not have set up correctly in SMC3, which is basically causing these issues. And that is the frequency pulse width modulation. See how I've got it on 15 kilohertz now? This was set at 35 kilohertz for motor one and for motor two. I did not realize that the IBT2, right, and the MOSFET chips that are in the IBT2s, they're only rated to 25 kilohertz. I didn't know that, guys. That was just ignorance. I didn't know that. And I'd never seen it. anyone talk about that before. I just stumbled upon this. So immediately I went, ah, well, that's probably not going to be helping my IBT2s. Cha-ching. Now, in that same search, I found another thread which also talked about maximum pulse width modulation and where you should have that set for IBT2s. And you shouldn't have it set any more than 90 to 95% maximum than what your maximum available pulse width modulation would be. Now, in our case, in this SMC3 utility software, we can go as high as 225. 95% of that is 229, right? I was running them sometimes almost at their max limits, 240, 245, too high, okay? I'm stressing my motors and I'm stressing my IBT2s. I've sorted that out, guys. I've gone to 15 kilohertz now on motor one and motor two in the uh, pulse width modulation frequencies to be under the rated 25 kilohertz that the IBT2s are rated for. And I've brought my um, motor one um, maximum pulse width modulation down to 215. It has to be a bit higher uh, than motor two, which is a 200. So then they're level pegging because of the rig and motor three is a 200. I set those things up. I saved them. I came in. I did 10 laps of the Oyster Reich ring track here, 10 laps, and everything was cold to the touch. Whammo like magic, two little changes in SMC3, and it made a massive difference to the IBT2s they were only just getting warm after 10 laps, which is what I would have expected. I've got them double heat synced, got that passive cooling happening. I've got active cooling happening in the box, extracting any heat buildup in that box. It should have been working well, but I was overdoing it in SMC3, guys, and I had no idea. So I wanted to post this video because I know other people might not know this information as well. And if I can get this in here for people to know, it's going to save people some headaches and having to probably buy more IBT2s down the track and possibly uh, reducing the life of your motors. So there you go, guys. This was a video all about that. And to celebrate, I'm going to do 20 laps of the Oyster Reich Ring 1979 version in the Lotus 49 with my compatriots here. I'm going to lift their strength up here. It's a little bit lackluster there at 90 one, but trust me, I'm not that good a driver. About 92% should give me a nice drive uh, and actually be in the group with the cars. Guys, I'm going to run this 20 laps of this. I'm going to record it um, 
because I, I haven't done 20 laps. I've only done 10. I'm going to do 20 laps so then I can record at the end of this 20 laps with these new settings that my motors and my IBT2s are still honky-dory. After that amount of laps, I'll let you know the results at the end of the video. So I'm not going to be talking through the video like I have been in other videos. It's just rubbish, the audio. It's because the doctor doesn't have a very good audio set up, really, at the end of the day. I'm just going to do the race, and then at the end of the race, I will uh, let you guys know what the results were, both on the heat in the motors and the heat in the IBT2s. So you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and take it easy out there.
guys will have a very quick feel now of both the motors and the IBT2s, keeping in mind what I said uh, when I first uh, discovered this issue. Now that motor is starting to get quite warm, and that motor is getting quite warm. Now let me check my IBT2s. Traction loss motor, cold as ice. Second motor, motor two this side, is cold and the IBT2s are cold. Great, so those frequencies in the uh, PWM, pulse width modulation, they need to be wound back guys to keep your IBT2s cooler. They've got to be wound back to um, what I said, either 15 or 20 kilohertz, don't be any higher than that. And keep these motors as low as you can get them. Like I said, that's pretty warm. That's a pretty full-on track, and you saw the rig. You saw how uh, hard it is on the rig, that track, and that car. I hope this info has helped you guys uh, avoid disaster with your IBT2s. We'll see you guys in the next video.